Bridge Junction. Once a notorious Victorian accident black spot, the steep hill between the stations at Stourbridge Junction and Stourbridge Town is now provided by a People Mover, a hybrid powered rail car which uses flywheel energy storage to reduce consumption and emissions. So, Stourbridge Town, my Bradshaws tells me, a handsome town noted for its glass manufacture. Well, glass has been made since almost ancient history, but the Victorians had a voracious appetite for it. Boosted by an influx of Huguenot glassmakers taking refuge from religious persecution in France, the plentiful supplies of fire clay and sandstone have made Stourbridge synonymous with glass since the 17th century. I'm meeting historian and author Paul Collins at a working museum called the Red House Glass Cone to find out more. This is one of the most extraordinary buildings I've ever seen. What are its dimensions? It's 100 feet high to the very top, right up there, and it is 60 feet in diameter at the base. It was completed in 1788, and we're actually looking at two million bricks. Two million bricks? Two million bricks. Come in inside and you'll get a better idea of how it works. Thank you. So here you are. Oh, it's like a cathedral dome, isn't it? Magnificent. It is magnificent, but it's a most magnificent chimney, because that's effectively what it's doing. I never saw a more beautiful chimney. It's one of the best, isn't it? You have a series of 12 glass pots in here, which have got molten glass inside them, about 1400 centigrade. The glass blower would have one of these blow pipes, uh, which would, the end of which would be heated, it would then be dipped into the glass pot, mm -hmm. the glass would then come out and then he would blow it. Uh, it's quite a task, would you like to just try the weight of that? Oh, that is... Yeah, surprisingly now, heavy, isn't it? You're holding it in the obvious way. Yes. This is where you hold it. So if you try holding with, with both hands there, then with molten glass on the end, yeah. quite difficult, isn't it? Yeah, you need very good arm muscles to do that. Extremely good arm muscles. And then you're also creating something that's very delicate and very beautiful as well, using that. Did the railways make much of a difference? In terms of the actual organisation of the industry, not a lot. What it did do was open up vastly uh, larger uh, markets for the glass. Uh, you could get uh, glass products to Liverpool, to Southampton, to London. The 19th century was the golden age of Stourbridge glass. Local glassmakers created myriad shapes, colours and decorative techniques far outstripping any other country for technical brilliance and aesthetic beauty. And some of the pioneers of the luxurious and coveted cameo glass perfected their skills here too. The railway companies themselves also bought enormous uh, numbers of glasses. Uh, they all had little monograms on them when you had a, a glass of wine or a glass of something in the dining car on a train. Uh, it had the, the railway company's uh, logo on it or initials on it. That would have been made here as well. What of the industry now? The industry, as it was represented by the products of this glass cone, has effectively gone. It was priced out of the market by cheaper foreign imports. What has happened is that we've gone back to a more artisan type of glass industry, a studio glass industry, as you like, and there's probably a lot more imagination and diversity in the use of glass and experimentation with it as a material uh, than there ever was at any point in its history. Which way are the artisans? The artisans are through there, Michael. Lovely to see you. Nice to meet you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye. Sarah, hello. Hello. I see you make these beautiful glass beads in, in many colours. Is that exactly what you're doing now? It is, yes. Every bead I make is different. Cause I, I, I don't have a plan of how it's going to turn out. I just keep adding and building. Shall we make one that's really different by, by giving you a hand? OK. So what do I do? Right, if you take a seat here. So you'll need one of these. Ooh, it's Twiz gonna... Twizzle that bit so it doesn't fall off. Yeah, I'm twizzling it. Okay. Twizzling. So when it's hot, you want to put it on like that? Yes. And then you turn the mandrel away. I'm turning the mandrel away. Ooh, that's nice. That's very nice. And so now I'm building up a little ring of glass. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really good. Look at that. That's brilliant. Oh, you've you got it. You didn't know I had it in me, did you? No, that's I'm awesome. really enjoying that. This is going to look like no other glass bead that was ever made. Let's have a look. Can you just hold. I told you I would make a bead like no other. 